Hello my soccer universe, let's talk about the games from Friday and Saturday and you'll get some the tomorrow probably from the car and again in one video. Uh, yeah, for once I really want to say Friday because um, I actually, stupidly enough, uh, watched a little bit of those. That's still stupid because I really, really, really should have slept. But I decided to prepare um, the video that I posted this morning on the on Europe, European Championship. And for that reason, yeah, let's put the game on at the same time and yeah, that's how it went. Um, but I saw a little bit of Frankfurt uh, beat Leverkusen. I think it was a 2-0, 3-0, something like that. 3-0, uh, yes. Um, was pretty much one-sided. Um, I then flipped over to uh, League 1 to see PSG play at Nice. And if you haven't seen the highlights, uh, Di Maria scores the first two goals. Must watch. The second one is a must watch goal. Um, it's probably, and uh, comes later, probably the second best goal of the weekend. Although technically, I mean, really awesome goal. Absolutely awesome goal. Um, just when uh, Nice then came back, who didn't have much chances, uh, gonna go pulls one back and then uh, they go haywire. Um, two red cards in short uh, succession. The first one for Cyprian is a yellow red and then Christophe Erel uh, needs to uh, put his elbow in the PSG's face and so there are two men down and Mbappé on his comeback makes a third in the card the fourth and ends that way. I also saw a little bit of Osasuna uh, playing uh, at Granada and Granada gets the win there and I really have to say I start liking these Granada jerseys a whole lot. Granada stays near the top of the table. And that basically ends the Friday. So Saturday, let's stay in Spain. Uh, Barcelona gets a relatively easy win over Eibar, Messi scoring. Um, Atletico Madrid, Valencia. First half was really, and I actually saw more than I wanted to be, uh, because the, as I'll talk in a sec about the Lazio at Atalanta game, I decided to put Atletico Madrid Valencia on the second screen to have. And from what, what I could say, Atletico Madrid was really playing well going forward uh, in the first half, but you know, uh, Morata and Diego Costa are making a competition of who is the least. Um, dangerous one. Joao Felice had a really good chance uh, that just scraped the post and then they get a penalty. VAR decided it was pretty clear. Uh, rather stupid penalty as far as I remember. I mean, uh, Cherishev steps into the box and then uh, puts it uh, with the hand. Uh, Costa steps up, makes it 1-0. Uh, fully deserved lead at halftime. And then the second half suddenly Valencia is coming. Um, I was also happy slash surprised that both teams could play in the first team shirts because I thought that the red white of Val of Atletico will clash with the white of Valencia but actually looks quite fine. I think I want to see more like that uh, home colors versus home colors if possible. Uh, Cherishev had a great chance that um, Oblak maybe put the finger to it and it uh, went to the post uh, bar and came down down again. Um, but then yeah, Atletico kind of was only defending from front. Opinion. They paid for it, especially since they made all the substitution and Joao Felice is, uh, gets an in injury, uh, so they have to play with uh, one man less. And it really was, is the question whether Joao Felice will, will be able to come back. Um, Valencia gets a free kick near the box and Dani Parejo uh, with a laser outside of the box. The ball looks like it's going over and then comes down really beautifully done uh, makes it 1-1 Valencia could not find the winner although it was there so it ends 1-1 and then the other big result was that in the evening Real Mallorca beat Real Madrid 1-0 and we have suddenly the crisis team Barcelona in first place so um, if the opposition is not doing well enough uh, Barcelona can even afford having a horrible start of epic proportions and still finish first. Uh, let's go quickly to Serie A. Um, 
I saw Atalanta Lazio. I saw that Atalanta had a really nice start to the whole thing. Um, go, get, get, getting up a 3 0 lead. I think Muriel scored two, and then Papu Gomez made it a third one. Uh, the second one by Muriel was a free kick from the edge of the box, uh, like two to the side, where it all fl slipped through everyone. Um, it seemed like game done and dusted. Uh, and that's why I then really decided to actually pay some attention to the um, uh, Atletico Valencia game because to me that was kind of the bigger matchup uh, because, you know, 3-0 down. <laughs> well, it was again one of those where I, I didn't really hit myself for it, but um, yeah, I could have made a better decision to stay with that game and not go then to Bundesliga where I, I really didn't watch. I mean, I saw the conference call. I didn't really see all that much, to be honest. Um, Lazio came back. Within a minute, I think 69th and 70th, uh, they get a penalty that Immobile converts. Uh, and then I think Correa makes it 2-3. Then Papu Gomez has a huge chance to decide the game and cannot make it. And then in stoppage time, Lazio gets another penalty and Immobile converts. And it ends 3-3. Napoli gets a relatively easy 2-0 uh, win over Hellas Verona. Uh, Juventus, uh, Ronaldo makes a great goal uh, to make it 1-0. Bologna equalizes, but uh, with a horrible defending, uh, Pjanic uh, gets the winner. Juventus probably could have added more. And then, yeah, then let's I watched the Bundesligas. Uh, really not much in Germany. You know, the Werder Bremen had the 1-1. Berlin, Union gets a very early goal against Freiburg, makes it 2-0. Augsburg, Bayern, that was uh, there I saw most. It was 2-2. I think I saw 1-1. Augsburg took, took the lead. Bayern then scored two goals. Gnabry had a wonderful shot that just kissed the post. Uh, but it ends 2-2. It's again Bayern draw up. Uh, the points dropped for Bayern. Bayern dropped for points, I was about to say. Leipzig, Wolfsburg, the big duel on top stays 1 1. Wolfsburg remains unbeaten. And then in the evening, and I started watching mid of the second half because I watched my Lusk. I will get to that last. Uh, I saw Dortmund play Gladbach in a really great game. Tense, tight, lots of skill there. Dortmund had two goals chalked off, but the winner for Dortmund through Reus was just a beauty. Uh, how Torgan Hazard, whose goal was chalked off because I think five plays before there was an offside position. This seemed to be a little bit too nitpicky to me, honestly. Um, he plays a great ball and Reus puts it to, uh, through the goalkeeper's uh, legs. Both goalkeepers pretty outstanding and Bürki for Dortmund even had to come off. Uh, with, with an injury and in stoppage time, his uh, replacement made a great save. But that was a really good game to watch. I have, I have, I have, I have to say, it was a lot of a lot was right riding on, on the game. And at the moment, uh, it even meant that Gladbach stays top ahead of Wolfsburg because Bayern couldn't couldn't win, and Dortmund is now level with Bayern. Uh, so it was a huge win for our Dortmund because they're now right back into it. Schalke wins on Sunday. They are actually first in the table. So, uh, it's that close in Germany. Um, before I go to Lask, because there's also a lot to talk about quickly in England. Um, I watched highlights only, but Chelsea got kind of a messy win against Newcastle. Um, Spurs totally undeserved, honestly. Get a 1-1 against Watford. There should have been a penalty given. De Olofeo, uh was, I think it was Vertonghen, who hit him twice in one tackle, and it's not a penalty. I don't know what the VAR ref was uh, looking at there. Uh, they get the late equalizer. Tottenham is absolutely a mess. Watford gets finally some points. Uh, Leicester gets a come from behind uh, win at home to Burnley, where also VAR took a little bit sent center stage because uh, Burnley gets an equalizer and then, yeah, foul is given, but mm, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Yes, it's probably the right decision. Uh, I also like that Aston Villa gets a 2-1 win over Brighton. Everton, uh, West Ham was also a 2-0 win, all a little bit against the run of play, but yeah, Everton also gets off to a start. And most importantly, City gets a win at Crystal Palace in the most colorful game of the weekend. I don't think there will be a more colorful game. Crystal Palace in red and uh, blue with a little bit of white and matches City in their pink neon jerseys. Uh, yeah, it's a sight to behold, this color matchup. But Lusk, that was for me the big story. Uh, for once, I decided to really 
uh, get to, you know, I, I, I know hard for once. I decided I'm gonna watch, if I can, every last game, uh, whatever may. And I have to say, I, it was the right decision. Um, nine goals in that game. Mattersburg took a very early lead, four minutes later, Lask can equalize, and then Goiginger uh, makes it 2 1 after defensive errors of Mattersburg. Um, almost should have had another one where a beautiful play, and he is kind of uh, near, uh, near the near post, uh, could pull it in, but sees that the goal goalkeeper is uh, kind of off position and from a very acute angle he tries to put in just cannot man ma manage it then they get the 2-2 uh, uh, but four minutes, minutes, minutes later they manage again to make it 3-2 through, through Ramftl where it's again uh, so much uh, defensive errors in the Mat Matosburg defense uh, Goiginger has the ball they cannot take it really off him uh, he then manages to lose it. Uh, it seems that it is clear, but uh, um, Holland steps in, goes to Ramfel, who has been all the time free on the side, and puts it in 3 2. Uh, was quite the exciting game, I have to say. Uh, in the second half, it was only one way football. And it started with Ramfel and Goiginger not being on the same same page, where Goiginger lets the ball go. He's a little bit too selfish. As much as I like him, I think he is our best player, but he was a little bit too selfish. Uh, if he would have let the goal, Ramfle could have made it 4-2, and I was thinking, ah, he could have decided there, now Matosburg will come back. No, they never came back. It took a goal from Marco Ragus in the 64th. He, he was not really in the game, but one of the craziest goals you will ever see. He gets the ball, kind of was too ahead of goal, and uh, he kind of mishandles the first touch and then there's a defender there they both fall to the ground he's lying on the ground with the back to the goal but has the awareness to just take the ball with his two feet up and then bicycle kicks it lying on the floor into the net absolutely nuts goal i'm trying to get the highlights uh linked up there you gotta watch this goal it's absolutely unbelievable. Four minutes later, Goiginger makes it 5-2. Ramftl, another four minutes later, makes it 6-2. And then Tete, also a really nice goal, where he takes out the keeper and so on, makes it 7-2. Most goals scored for Lusk in the Austrian Bundesliga. Seven. Not the highest win, uh, but the most goals scored. They never scored seven before. An absolutely nuts match. Because uh, in the first half, it was really that... Uh, Every shot went into goal, more or less. Almost every shot went into goal. And Lask only had nine shots on target and seven went in. For the first time this season, for the first time this season, they managed to make goals. My only hope now is that this is not, uh, that they didn't waste their, you know, I I hope there's not like this. You have only these many goals available and now you wasted them there. I hope and I hope they will be as clinically as they were today. Finally, they were clinically. That was really worth watching. Really great game. Very happy. This was the best game yesterday. Didn't watch any evening games because simply I was too tired. So I just saw highlights. And now I'm waiting for um, the afternoon games on Sunday. And we have a United Liverpool matchup and we have Milan's which I'm also look, look, looking forward to. I think those are the two matches that I'm going to watch uh, today and summarize tomorrow. Well, Sunday was a disappointment overall. And given that United showed a sign of life, I decided, well, let's pull out this shirt and give it its debut in a review video, though I am really actually... <laughs> Uh, should have probably worn the same shirt or jerseys yesterday because Lask was the story for me yesterday. Um, going uh, back uh, one to the um, Saturday, I actually managed to watch the Eibar Barcelona highlights, and I think the one thing that's remarkable that um, up front they played Griezmann, Messi, and Suarez, and all three of them scored uh, the Griezmann goal was a really nice long ball from Longley. Messi actually had a chance in the first half, but the keeper just got his hand on there. Um, but in the second, he made his goal and he assisted uh, with a 
teeny tiny assist by Griezmann, not. And then uh, in the end, uh, he also assisted Suarez's goal, who probably should have made one. Two and they, they pulled out another stat that every time Barcelona plays at one o'clock on um, Messi and Suarez score. So that happened again. Oh, where to start? Well, uh, there was not too much on my plate. Uh, yesterday I said I want to watch two games. That's the uh, United Liverpool game and that's Milan Lecce. And maybe I sprinkle in a little bit. I saw actually only from one, uh, two more games, and the first one uh, was the early game was Sampdoria Roma, a complete disappointment. I mean, uh, I did not see that much except for the last 70 minutes. I think they I watched a little bit more attentively, but to be honest, uh, Roma, yes, they have many in injuries, they didn't show, show much, and from Sampdoria, yeah, they are down in the basement, so was also not coming too much from them, so uh, that was truly not a good match and then Kleivert gets set off just when Roma was about to launch a last ditch attack. Didn't go any, in, anywhere at the end, maybe Sampdoria even could have won it if Cagliarella finds a scoring from from last season, he doesn't, so... <clears throat> the really nil-nil draw and kind of this empty feeling uh, after the draw was about to continue a lot. Uh, I... Of course, everything was then on United Liverpool, and you know everyone said Liverpool is gonna trash United, and uh, it's gonna be this huge scoreline. And from the beginning, actually, it was everything. But um, United had defensively a plan and attacked Liverpool uh, straight out uh, quite well. Liverpool had trouble finding its groove, definitely. Um, and it took them about 15 minutes where the first time you see a little bit of Liverpool it was also imprecise. It was, it, it was not Liverpool. And I think this was down to Manchester United actually trying to prevent what Liverpool is doing best. And yeah, the game moves on. Uh, just when Liverpool had the first chance, I think in the 34th minute, there was uh, some combination where Firmino take, takes it out. And just a few, few minutes later, uh, the ball gets outside to James. There was a foul before uh, on uh, Origi, I think it was. And when or or Origi is playing, you already know that the front three will not be clicking because he's no Salah. Uh, James gets a nice ball and then he crosses it in to Rashford uh, in front of the entire defense and Rashford puts it into net 1-0. And you gotta say it was not undeserved at that point. Um, Manek very quickly finds an equalizer, uh, almost out of nowhere, you, you have to say, but um, touched the ball with the hand. And VAR twice is at Lindelof's um, assistance first. VAR doesn't take the foul ahead of the 1 0. And then VAR clearly identifies, because Lind Lindelof was not in a good position with Manek, and clearly identifies that Manek. Is uh, has played a handball, so it's one nil at the half for United, and that's a bit everything that the experts said was not gonna happen. And then in the second half, it was just a boring game. On, 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 honestly, Liverpool had possession, 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 but did not do anything with it absolutely nothing. And the longer the game went on, I, I have to say, and probably it's to do to the lack of attacking options. But also the changes that came did not really inspire me. I mean, there was uh, okay, Chamberlain came on, um, Van Alton was taken off. Uh, off. I'm blanking out now, but I, I, all, I, I thought that all those changes really didn't uh, tell me, yeah, this is now really gonna move anything forward. Again, United defense, Levisan, yeah, Lalana. I think Lalana came on, I think, uh, crucially. So, uh, and I really thought that that uh, United could make a goal uh, to make it two, two, two nil, and the game is done and dusted. However, uh, for some reason, then the uh, Rashford, who was this constant threat, was taken off uh, at one nil, which I thought, hmm, that's an interesting choice. Uh, he really just wants to, wants to defend, and uh, Solskjaer got punished. And 
almost out of nowhere Lalana finds the equalizer uh, also clear net in and what more no there was not much much more i thought that liverpool might get a lucky win but that would have been way too much and so for the first time this season liverpool drops points i think they still enjoy a very comfortable six point lead uh in the meantime i also follow a little bit the other big matchup in austria where actually i didn't mention yesterday that um salzburg drop points also for the first time this season uh no for a second time first time was against lask for the second time this season uh playing only one one at sturm guards kind of getting a lucky draw there sturm guards played well for once and probably you can say the same to rapid uh who held wolfsburg to a one one draw wolfsburg uh, scoring the equalizer which is i saw five minutes left and i thought saw the equalizer very happy about that so uh but yeah so on top of the austrian table um salzburg three points ahead of lask three points ahead of Wolfs wolfsburg and rapid is uh, close behind so uh lask definitely the big winner this round but yeah uh i then watched nfl i saw that schalke oh and i saw the highlights um, um, as well inexplicably failed to become first in the table they had hoffenheim in the back but then they catch a counter Kramaric makes it one nil and then uh, late in the game they make it two nil uh at the point where schalke should have led comfortably it was one way football but this is schalke uh, the nearly man they really could have put a stamp on there but then yeah i watched nfl my pack one uh and then i put nfl on the, the red zone on the small screen which is usually not a good but yesterday it worked and then i had milan lecce on really was excited to see uh, uh intrigued not excited to see milan under new coach and i have to say they played better but i still did not get it i mean there was billia at i don't want to see billia anymore i know he plays well but he's also slow and old there was Susu, there was Jalanoglu uh, in the star starts, the starting kind of and to their credit, all three played well. Leao up front made all the sense in the world. Uh, and I have to say, Mina was lively, it's just the old guard. It's again the same players that we have for two years already. And you want to see something new, you want to see something so, 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 so fresh. And whenever you think you have to throw away these players, they actually play well. Uh, why not all the time? Jalanoglu gets a wonderful opening goal and Milan actually had Lecce in the bag for most of the first half and again you don't make the goals. Second half a similar pick -pick picture and, and, and I think most Milan players thought yeah it was not that this is gonna be easy and then Lecce sh uh, showed, showed, showed a, little, uh, uh, a little bit and then they get a hand penalty through VAR yeah, it was hand, but you know, this uh, similar with the Liverpool goal, uh, <laughs> those hand penalties drive, drive me nuts to 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 well. Yes, it's by the rule, but there are so much clearer fouls given, and why give this one? So, yeah, whatever. Uh, it is given, Donnarumma saves it, but the, on, on, on the rebound, um, it's uh, put in, in, into the net. Yeah. Well, maybe Nilo needs a little bit kick up the backside. Yes, they needed that one. Uh, but <clears throat> Pianta comes on, uh, Krunic comes on, Rebic comes on, and it's kind of all, yeah, they're trying, that. They're, they're, they're trying. You can see that there is maybe a little bit more idea of a game in there, but still not uh, quite clicking. However, again, Chalanoglu, with a moment of brilliant, gets past the defense, puts the ball, uh, passes it back, and there is Piontek, gets his first goal from open play, 2-1, yay, late goal, winner, nope, nope, Lecce slams it into the net in stoppage time, Milan cannot find the winner, and it ends 2-2, and so all games that I watched end in a draw, and it's most of the time, this, it was really disappointing. It was really this dis is dis 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 disappointing fortunately in the nfl there was um good results so yeah that ends my watching weekend uh i'm probably gonna wait for the monday night games so i'm not gonna watch monday night uh games probably but i'm gonna wait for the results and i will do the, my round of video you'll get wednesday morning so let's take that again let me know what you watched uh I think Saturday and Friday were exciting games and I have to say also there were crazy goals scored. 
However, Sunday was a complete blah. Disappointing, to be honest. Drop a comment below. Let me know in the world what you watch, whether you agree with me, with all of my games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.